Okay, yes, hello. Hi, I'm your weird uncle Raul, even though we're probably not related. Okay, nieces, okay, nephews, as you've probably guessed, I am not the biggest fan of the modern. I mean, I hate modern movies. Everything that comes out is totally terrible. Okay, I don't hate all modern movies. Some of them can be pretty good. But modern video games? Oh, I just hate those. They're just total schlock. I just can't... Okay, I don't hate all modern video games. I mean, some stuff Nintendo's coming out with is pretty cool. Okay, okay, I get it. It's the trope of three. I said I hate modern movies, I hate modern video games, and now I say I hate modern toys, and you show me. No! <sighs> Nieces and nephews, what do you get when you mix faux minimalism, faux nostalgia, and the very real urge to make boatloads of money? You got the dreaded Funko Pop. So, where do these millennial artifacts come from? Well, like most great things in the 2010s, it started in the 1990s. Originally found as a bobblehead company in 1998. Makes sense. Funko began their journey into the world of toys with Big Boy products modeled after the fast food icon. I have the Big Boy bank here. And if you look at the bottom, at the very bottom, Funko products. Now look at that. This is Grandpa Funko Pop here. You can't really see how they're similar, but you can feel in material how they're similar. They're both very, very dense, even though this one's obviously hollow because it's a bank. They're both very dense vinyl. But this was only the start. In 2005, the company was sold and it expanded its business by getting its rights on even more pre-existing characters. Ah yes, pop culture bait. Get their dollars by associating things with happy memories. There's an episode all about this. So in 2011, Funko revealed their magnum opus, the New York Toy Fair. Their masterpiece, their crown gem, their Big Mac item, whatever you want to call it, it earned them lots and lots of money. Existing characters and brands! Existing characters and brands! I truly believe that their business model is completely founded on this. Existing characters and brands. I mean, look at their website. Their tagline, which is in their description, by the way, reads, Everybody is a fan of something. Everyone is a fan of something, so we have something for everyone to spend their money on! What, the fact that they've made every, and I mean every character from media isn't good enough for you? Well, let's simplify them to the nth degree. More than caricature, more than chibi. And let's remove any stylization and give them two soulless black dots for eyes. Directly manipulating the cute head to eye ratio we're all evolved to have and value. I mean, I really don't get Funko Pops on a deep personal level, but I do get Funko Pops on a shallow corporate level. Not only are they capitalizing on cute, but there is something to merchandising every, and I mean every character. Everyone has their personal favorites, and if you know nerd culture, that extends to all characters. Including already existing characters with a temporary costume change. This is also genius because who else are making toys of these characters? No one. But why? Well, 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 let your old Uncle Raw break it down. EFP, before Funko Pop, when a semi-popular franchise would come out, they would only have a little bit of budget for merchandising. They usually pick their main character, their most interesting character, to make merchandise of to advertise their movie. Unless the characters are all part of a set, like Ninja Turtles, they're usually just one or two. And why don't they just make every character to advertise the movie? It's simply not cost effective. That franchise has to fund the production, the creators, and a billion other things. Figures and merchandise are kind of an afterthought. They just look at what's going to sell the most. 
However, on the flip side, when you sell your rights to a toy figure company who wants to milk every, and I mean every character for all they're worth, that, my dear nieces and nephews, is cost effective. I hate this because Funko Pop screams, give someone gives you when they know nothing else about you. Oh, you see I like Helga? Thanks! I'll put it next to my unscented candles and stack of unused gift cards. You have no idea what I'm like inside. I also really hate this for the very reasons I have expressed. They make merchandise of characters no one else makes merchandise of. Like Benson! Look at this! I love this! This is the only good Funko Pop. I love this! And as you see, the gumballs inside are free floating! How genius is that? I love it. The only good Funko Pop. This one. Um, I mean, that's pretty cool because how much Benson merch is there? I promise you, not a lot, because if there was, I would have it. And that, my dear nieces and nephews, everything you just witnessed there is how Funko Pop gets people. And I'm part of this problem, which is why I hate it so much. I mean, these Uggo Pops aren't all bad. I mean, they are pretty detailed. Let, let's compare, let's compare. As you see, it's not a complete cop-out of Helga. They got her exact hairline, even the back. They got it pretty precisely in the ears, of course. They got most of it down. And like, if you look at the dress and shoes, the detail is there. Just why is it all missing in the face? And it's not even completely missing because she has a nose, she has ears. Why the soulless dead eyes? Cause it's stylized, it's not stylized, it's ugly. I know they make every, and I mean every character debate your dollars. But if they have your character and nobody else has it, they're filling the demand in a relatively inexpensive way. And it kind of sucks Funko Pops are so ugly. Because they would make an awesome cheap alternative, but a lot of people have to settle. Simply because nobody makes a product of it, or it's too exclusive or too expensive. So is it good that they feel a demand that nobody else does, or bad that they feel a demand that nobody else does? I'll let you be the judge of that. And when it comes down to it, I can't fault them that much. They're a company that became famous by licensing pre-existing characters. That's what they did from the beginning. It just grinds my gears that they're so popular, but simplicity and nostalgia, that's all people need. So, nieces and nephews, subscribe, support me on Patreon, and follow me on all social media. Uh, thank, and good night. Good night, and thank.